Hello everyone. Welcome to the module on the nervous system. In this module, we will talk about nervous system embryology and its related congenital malformations. That means we will talk about the embryology aspect of nervous system and congenital pathology. Okay. So let me take you to this first diagram, which is development of the neural plate or the neural development. Now the neural development starts in the day 18 in gestation and is completed by day 21. Its major conversion is the conversion of the neural plate formed into neural tube. Okay. Now let me brief you all about the development of the neural system. The notochord which is this structure induces the overlying ectoderm. So the blue structure is the ectoderm to differentiate into the neuroectoderm and form neural plate. Okay. So the notochord induces the overlying ectoderm. That means it sends signals to the overlying ectoderm to differentiate into the neuroectoderm and form neural plate. Now this neural plate plate then invaginates or folds to form neural tube and neural crest cells. So these portion turn into neural crest cells whereas this invagination fuses and forms the neural tube. Is this clear? Whereas the notochord gets converted into the nucleus pulpuses of the intervertebral disc in the adults. Is this clear? So we spoke about the neural plate, neural fold and the neural crest cells. Now let me tell you about the two different aspects of the neural plate that is the alar plate and the basal plate. Now the alar plate is the dorsal neural plate which is sensory in function whereas the basal plate is ventral and is motor in function. Is this clear? The alar plate is regulated by TGF beta and it includes bone morphogenic protein that is BMP. Whereas the basal plate is controlled or regulated by SHH gene that is sonic hedge, hedge gene. Okay, so that is sonic hedgehog gene. Am I clear? Now there is the same orientation as the spinal cord and hence it is the formation or the orientation of the spinal cord is based on alar plate and the basal plate. Is this clear? Now talking about the central and peripheral nervous system and its origin, the neuroepithelia in the neural tube forms the CNS neurons, ependymal cells and oligodendrocytes and astrocytes. Now the ependymal cells forms the inner lining of the ventricles and forms some cells called as choroid plexus. Now these choroid plexus further forms cerebrospinal fluid. Is this clear? So CNS neurons, ependymal cells, oligodendrocytes and astrocytes are produced by neuroepithelial cells in the neural tube. Whereas the neural crest cells forms the PNS neuron, Schwann cells, glial cells, melanocytes, adrenal medulla. Is this clear? So the neural crest cell forms the CNS neuron, Schwann cells, glial cells, melanocytes and the adrenal medulla. The mesoderm basically forms the microglia or the macrophages of the nervous system. Am I clear? So we spoke about the neural development and the various origin of central and peripheral nervous system. Now talking about the various structure of brains and how they are formed. Okay. So this is the basic outline of the embryonic brain which has three major parts that is the forebrain, midbrain and the hindbrain. Okay. The forebrain is called as the prosencephalon, the midbrain is called as the mesencephalon and the hindbrain is called as the rhombencephalon. Is this clear? Now it is, it has a cavity and a outer wall and both of which forms different structures. 
Now the forebrain forms two structures that is the telencephalon and the diencephalon. Okay, the telencephalon basically forms the two cerebral hemispheres and the basal ganglia, whereas the cavities forms the lateral ventricles. Is this clear? Now, talking about the diencephalon, diencephalon forms the thalamus, hypothalamus, and retina of the eye, and the cavity of the diencephalon forms the third ventricle. Am I clear? Now, talking about midbrain or the mesencephalon, mesencephalon forms the midbrain and its cavity. The wall forms the midbrain, whereas the cavity forms the cerebral aqueduct, which is the connection between the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. Am I clear? The hindbrain, which is the rhombencephalon, forms two parts. That is the metencephalon and myelencephalon. The metencephalon forms the pons and cerebellum, whereas myelencephalon forms medulla. Okay. Now the cavity of metencephalon forms the upper part of the fourth ventricle, whereas myelencephalon forms the lower part of the fourth ventricle. Am I clear? So these are the basic developments of structures in the brain. And please remember that the telencephalon is the first structure to develop. The next one is the diencephalon. The after that is the mesencephalon, followed by metencephalon and myelencephalon. Is this clear? Now, talking about the various pathology aspects of nervous system, which includes neural tube defects. Okay. Now, the neural tube defects occurs when the neuropores fails to fuse in the fourth week. Okay, now when neural pores fail to fuse, there is a persistent connection between amniotic cavity and the spinal canal. So there is a connection between the amniotic cavity and the spinal canal. Neural tube defects are associated with maternal diabetes and folate deficiency. Okay, now please remember that the Finding aspect or the prognostic factor is the increase in the alpha fetoprotein levels in the amniotic fluid and the maternal serum. Okay, so if a fetus is produced with neural tube defects, it will have majorly increase in the alpha fetoprotein levels in the amniotic fluid and the maternal serum, except for the disease that is. Spina bifida occulta, in which there is normal alpha fetoprotein levels. Am I clear? Now there is also increase in the acetylcholine esterase levels in the amniotic fluid, which is a helpful confirmatory test. Okay. Now talking about the various neural tube defects, which include spina bifida occulta, meningocele, myelomeningocele, myelocystis, and anencephaly. Okay, now talking about the spina bifida occulta. Now let me just tell you about the normal diagram of the spinal cord. That is, the spinal cord is present in the spinal canal, which is covered by dura mater and the leptomeninges. There are transverse processes, and there is skin on the posterior aspects. Okay. Now talking about spina bifida occulta, there is a failure of the caudal neuropores to close. Okay, so the caudal neuropores, not the cranial one or the rostral one, the caudal one fails to fuse, and there is spina bifida occulta. Now it is usually seen in the lower vertebral levels. The dura mater is intact and is associated with tufts of hair. Okay, tufts of hair or skin dimple at the level of bony defect. There is a bony. Defect which leads to formation of tufts of hair, but please remember that in spina bifida occulta there is no change in the spinal cord structure. That means the dura mater is not herniated. Is this clear? Whereas talking about meningocele, the meninges herniate through the bony defects. Okay, so there is a herniation of the bony defects, but the neural tissue remains intact. Whereas in a other defect, that is the myelomeningocele, there is herniation of both the bony 
the neural tissue as well as the meninges are both herniated okay so in myelomeningocele both the meninges and the neural tissue that example the corda equina herniate through the bony defect am i clear so in spina bifida occulta no herniation in meningocele herniation of the meninges whereas in myelomeningocele herniation of both the neural tissue and the meninges is this clear now talking about myelocystis which is also called as rachisystis it is a exposed unfused neural tissue without skin meningeal covering okay so in this structure there is no meninges that means the meninges are absent am i clear whereas an anencephaly which is a failure of rostral neuropore to close that is mean the cranial neuropores to close there is no formation of forebrain that means the forebrain is completely absent and no and a an open clavarium okay now the patients with or the fetus with anencephaly produces polyhydramnios so i've already spoken about polyhydramnios in neural embryology module so please check that out and there is no swallowing in the no swallowing center in the brain anencephaly presents with a frog shaped face because the fore brain is absent am i clear so this is all about the neural tube defects now talking about holo presencephaly and lesion presencephaly when there is a failure of embryonic forebrain to fuse or separate that means the two ventricles that is the left and the right lateral ventricle does not separate and there are no formation of two cerebral hemisphere it usually leads to holo presencephaly okay that means there is formation of a mono ventricle now these are usually during fifth to sixth week and may be related in sonic hedgehog signaling pathway or the shh signaling pathway now it is associated with other midline defects including cleft lip and cleft palate which are of moderate form in severe forms of holo presencephaly they can be cyclopia and there is increased level or increased risk of pituitary dysfunction example diabetes insipidus and can be seen with 13 trisomy that is patau syndrome okay now when we look at the mri of a holen prosencephaly we can see a mono ventricle that means the ventricles do not separate and there is no separation of the cerebral hemispheres and there is fusion of both the basal ganglia is this clear so there is fusion of basal ganglia and there is no separation of the cerebral hemisphere whereas talking about the second aspect that is the lesion safari there is failure of the neuronal migration which results in smooth brain formation that means in lesion safari there is absence of sulci and gyri and hence the brain is smooth now this may be associated with microcephaly or ventriculomegaly am i clear so please remember that in holo presencephaly there is mono ventricle and in lesion cephaly it is a smooth brain is this clear now talking about the last aspect or the last congenital pathology of embryology aspects that is posterior fossa malformation okay now in posterior fossa malformation there are three kinds of defects or malformation that is chiari 1 malformation chiari 2 malformation and dandy walker malformation now these are usually associated with the cerebellum okay so whenever there is an ectopic growth of the cerebellar tonsil inferior to the foramen magnum okay that means this structure this is a excessive growth of cerebellar tonsil which is inferior to the foramen magnum there is presence of chiari 1 malformation now congenitally it is usually asymptomatic in childhood but it might manifest during adulthood with headaches and cerebellar symptoms 
Now it is also associated with spinal cavitation. Example, syringomyelia. I will cover syringomyelia and spinal cord defects. But please remember that scary one malformation is associated with spinal cord cavitations. Okay. Now, when we look in the MRI of Chiari 1 malformation, we see an ectopic growth. Okay, so this is the ectopic growth of the cerebellar tonsil. Now, talking about Chiari 2 malformation, there is herniation of cerebellar vermis with the tonsils. Okay, and it is again through the foramen magnum with the aqueductal stenosis. That means the aqueduct, the cerebral aqueduct gets stenosed or narrowed because of the herniation of the vermis and the tonsils now due to this the csf or the cerebrospinal fluid cannot pass through and hence there is a non-communicating hydrocephalus now chiari 2 malformation is usually associated with lumbosacral myelomeningocele and may be present with paralysis sensory loss at or below the level of the lesion and it is much, much more severe than the Chiari 1 malformation. Is this clear? Then talking about the last one, that is the Dandy Walker malformation, it is due to the urgenesis. That means there is no formation of the cerebellar vermis. Now, due to this, there is excessive enlargement of the fourth ventricle. Okay, so you can look in this part. There is excessive enlargement of the fourth ventricle and there is degenerative growth or no growth of cerebellar vermis now due to the cystic enlargement of the fourth ventricle it fills the posterior fossa and it is also associated with non-communicating hydrocephalus and spina bifida okay so we have spoken about embryonic development of the nervous system and we have spoken about the congenital pathologies associated with nervous system okay thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.